Hello, are you interested in learning how to deploy a CockroachDB cluster into a Kubernetes multi-cluster? Then this video is for you. My name is Alex Soto, Director of Developer Experience in Red Hat. And remember that if you want to stay updated with all our content that we are delivering, then follow me on Twitter and subscribe to the channel. So let's start. What we want to do is exactly the thing that you are seeing now in the screen. I've got a cluster, a Kubernetes cluster deployed in Amazon, and I've got another cluster deployed in Azure. Then what I want to do is just deploy there a cockroach DB cluster, one in Amazon and another one in Azure. But the good thing is that I want that this coverage DB cluster behaves as one. So not one, not two, and not three. It's a part of a bigger coverage DB cluster with node four and node five. Although they are in a different um, cluster provider, one is Amazon, another one is Azure. What I want is that all the coverage DB cluster behaves as one. So this gives us some kind of uh, uh, questions like how can I make to connect different pods from different clusters because they are in a different network and the answer is scupper okay a scupper makes us or kubernetes cluster connect between them so uh, kubernetes one and kubernetes two connects and from the point of view of each of the nodes there is like a one only cluster so a scupper is a multi-cloud communication for Kubernetes and basically Scapper enables secure communication across Kubernetes clusters with no VPNs, no special firewall rules. So let's see in action so you understand exactly what we're going to do. Uh, I've got here two clusters. Okay, let me um, clear this and this. Let's create namespaces. We need to create the same namespace in both clusters. I've got here my console, so I can do kubectl create namespace called RoachDB. So I'm creating the namespace in the first cluster, and now I can do kubectl create namespace called RoachDB in the second cluster. Now I've got two clusters with the same namespace, and then I can move there, move QNS, call RoachDB. Okay. And now I can move here, Q, oops, QNS. CockroachDB. Okay, now I've got both clusters with the same um, namespace and I move it to this namespace. Now, what I need to do is, first of all, deploy the CockroachDB cluster in cluster number one. I could use Helm, but in this case, I'm going to use um, YAML file, the typical YAML file. I can do kubectl apply minus f Cockroach DB stateful group one. So I'm just, you know, deploying my first um, set of nodes. No worries because these YAML files uh, are published and you'll be able to, you know, inspect by yourself by checking in the, the description. You'll see there the links. So now I can do kif cattle, get pods, and notice that it's creating the first three nodes of this cluster. And notice that I'm in the cluster number one. Give cuddle, get pods. Notice that they are almost running and here I can do give cuddle, get pods. And, and obviously, there is no pods, okay? It's because it's another cluster. I've not deployed anything. So now the coverage DB cluster is ready. It's running, but it's not ready. I need to initialize the, the um, the cluster, the coverage DB cluster. In the case of Helm, this part is done automatically. If you are deploying manually coverage DB, then you need to do it. So I'm going to do kubectl apply minus f cluster in EG1. So if you're, if you're curious of what is this cluster in it, G1, it's just a job. It's just a job that in it the cockroach db cluster okay so now i can do kubectl get pods and obviously you can see that i've got these three nodes of the cockroach db cluster up and running obviously if i do here kubectl get pods there's no pods then 
what I need to do is connect the network from uh, cluster one to cluster two. So from the point of view of CockroachDB, all the pods are running in the same network, okay? For this reason, I need to use a scupper, as I said, so I can do scupper in it. It's just a CLI tool, so you can just download it from the website, which you've already seen the, the, um, the location of the website, but again, the website is on the description. So I do scupper in it, and this is just um, initializing all the uh, scupper proxies. I can do scupper status to know exactly um, how it's uh, going. Notice that it says, okay, now a scupper is enabled, but there is no connection between clusters. I can do git cuddle, git cuddle, oops, git cuddle get pods again. And you see that now I've got these proxies here, right? This is the where the scupper magic uh, stands on, okay? It's here. I can do git cuddle get services if you want. And you see that there, I've got the a scupper services as well, and also the cockroach db internal g1 and cockroach db public here deployed. Okay. Now I need to expose the stateful set. Remember that uh, if cuddle get stateful set, remember that cockroach db cluster are um, created using the stateful set. And you can see that here I've got uh, one stateful set with three instances, which is the three nodes, right? So I, now I want to expose this stateful set. So Scupper makes some kind of magic. So this stateful set can be also available from another cluster. To do that, I need to do Scupper, expose. And for example, is this one, but G2 no, it's G1, okay. So I need to set, okay, I want to expose the stateful set cockroach db g1 in mode headless and the port is a 26257. Now I do this and that's all. I can do kit cuddle, get pods. Still, everything is exactly the same. But now the scupper is exposing me this, um, this cockroach db. Notice here, these proxies. These proxies are the ones who are exposing me to other clusters, this is stateful set. So you can do kit get pods, and now everything is up and running. Now, I need to connect to another uh, cluster, and to connect to another cluster, I need to create a token, right? A, a security token to, you know, to, to use it to connect to this cluster. This is a authentication method at the end. So I can do scupper connection token, and I want to store this connection token to one file that is called side one. This is the token that I need to use to connect to the cluster number one. Now it's been writing. Okay, now let's move to the second cluster. Of course I do could cut get pods and there is nothing there, right? Now let's do it another way. Let's start scooper here, scupper, scupper in it. And again, it's going to create this kind of match this kind of proxies which behaves all this magic notice that now it's pending and finally it's there and if you keep cut get pods now you see that there is a scupper proxy scupper router there now what i want to do is connect to the other cluster so i want that cluster one and cluster two from the point of view of stateful set and these namespaces behave like a single cluster I do scupper connect, not connect, and I put it the YAML file that I created here, right? This is the where the token is written. Now I can do scupper connect and say scupper is now configured to connect to this. And notice that this is the other cluster, is this cluster, okay? Now what's happening if I do keep cuddle get pods? Notice that now I'm seeing here the coverage db g1, 0 g11 and G12 is this one. In fact, these, these are not, okay, these are not the real pods. It's just an evident thing like a fake, if you want, coverage DB cost um, pods, okay? Now, um, uh, at the end I can do, for example, Keith Cuddle, describe, and I can do pod, and see that here uh, the image is not um, 
Cockroach TV image, but it's just a copper proxy, okay? Okay. Now, um, I've got all these um, things connected. Let's deploy my two nodes that behave or that are stored in this cluster, okay? So I've got cluster one with three nodes, then I want to create cluster two with two nodes. So I can do kip cuddle apply minus F and let's deploy this. So I'm just deploying now two nodes, two real nodes, two real CockroachDB nodes, okay? Now we can do kip cuddle get pods and notice that these three pods are the ones that represents, that are proxy to this one, to the other cluster, and these ones are two CockroachDB uh, instances that are in this real cluster, right? Let's see if it works. Okay, it's still, you know, creating and running. Notice that here they are running, but they are not ready. And they are not ready, but because they have not been initialized or they have not joined yet to any initialized CockroachDB cluster. Then what I need to do is expose this stateful set because remember that I said that you need to indicate to Scupper what are the elements, the resources that you want to expose between clusters. Notice that I've got here this one and now I can do Scupper expose and now instead of G2 I need to expose the, I, sorry, instead of G1 I need to expose the G2. Then I do this. And now is when the magic happens. Notice that if we do give cuddle get pods, you see that this G2 cluster, these nodes that before were not ready because they were not initialized, now they are initialized. And the reason that they are initialized is because they have joined a running coverage DB cluster, which is running in another Kubernetes cluster. Notice that these are two different clusters, right? So now I've cleared my um, console and let me do, for example, give cattle port forward of the port of, uh, of the pod, right? So we can check that the cluster has been created with five nodes, even though three nodes are in one, in one Kubernetes cluster and the other two nodes are in another Kubernetes cluster. So I can go here and then I can go to that. Um, Browser, and then we go to localhost 8080. Remember that this localhost 8080 is because I'm port forwarding the uh, CockroachDB dashboard that is located in Kubernetes cluster one. Okay, I'm, I'm just forwarding the content. Now see that I've got five nodes, G10, G12, G11, G21, and G20, right? So you can see that I've been able to create a CockroachDB cluster with five nodes where three nodes are located in cluster one and two nodes are located in cluster two. If you want to try it more, let me show you another thing. Let me clear. And now, for example, I could uh, do a kubectl run and this should be not this, but let me keep cattle get services because I don't remember exactly the name. Um, uh, this should be cockroach db public. Yes, then it's fine. I guess it should work. So now I'm just getting inside the cockroach db cluster of cluster one. And for example, I could just copy the example that you can see in coverage DB documentation, I can do create database bang. So I'm creating a database here. Okay, then I'm do, I can do a create table, but let me copy paste it. I, I've got here the, this create table just to not uh, get you bored in this. Okay, now I created a table and then I can do an insert into bang dot account counts balance and values, for example, 1000. Okay, now I've inserted something and I can do select all the content from bank.accounts. Oops, sorry. But remember that this is from the cluster one. So here I'm accessing 
the nodes one, two, or three from Cogroach DB cluster. Now I'm moving to the cluster number two. I'm going to close this. I'm going to connect two again. Give cuddle run, but in this case, I'm doing it using the cluster number two. So I'm accessing the other two nodes, the node four and the node five of the Cogroach DB cluster. And what's happened now if I do select from bank.account, there it is. Here you can see that the value is exactly the same, the ID is exactly the same. So Cogroach DB cluster is being updated across all our multi-cluster infrastructure for free without doing really nothing special, just using the scupper to synchronize all the content from all the Cogroach DB nodes. Hope that you enjoyed this video and remember that in the description you will find all the links for all the content that you need to reproduce this example and also links to the previous videos of CockroachDB, how to uh, develop a Quarkus application with CockroachDB and also how to deploy CockroachDB using Helm in a single cluster. Thank you very much.